Today we're going to look at how to make a custom save preset button. So why might you want this when there is one built into Hise's preset browser already? Well, you might have an interface such as the one I've created here, although this is a very simple one, where the preset browser is hidden most of the time and the user can bring it up at the click of a button when they want to load presets or edit them or save them. But the rest of the time it's not there. But it's quite often the case you want to have an additional save button on your interface so the user can make adjustments to the controls on the interface and just click a save button without having to go through the hassle of opening up the preset browser and then clicking save or add or whatever. So that's what we're going to look at today, how to create a custom save button. So as you can see, I've put together some parts of the interface already. We've got the preset browser button, you've seen that. Uh, we've got a label here, which is going to, that shouldn't be editable actually. Let's turn off the editable thing. Where is that? Editable, there we go. Not editable. So the user preset name will show up here. We've got a knob here. This doesn't do anything. It's just to let us see a difference in value when we change between different presets, just so we know that the preset browser is working. And finally, we've got a save button over here. So this is the thing we're going to be implementing today. So I've laid out the UI, I've rigged up this button, but the rest of it isn't doing anything yet. Let me just tell you how this button works, just as a sort of quick overview. So this button is called BTN Preset Browser. And here it is here. And when it's clicked, it triggers this callback, which just calls this FLT Preset Browser, which is the name of the preset browser floating tile. And we have a reference to it here. FLT Preset Browser dot show control and then it just uses the value of the button. So if the button's zero, the panel's hidden. If the button's one, the panel is visible. Uh, on init, we turn off the button and we hide the preset browser by default. So if I show the preset browser here, then I hit compile, it goes away and the button is turned off. For this to work, the button saving preset property must be disabled. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get the current preset that's loaded so that we can either overwrite it if there is one loaded and if there isn't one loaded then we can ask the user to uh, create a new one. So to get the current user preset if we open the API browser I think there's a function called get user preset or something like that. Let's see get current user there it is. So this will return the name of the current preset but it doesn't return an object you can see it returns a string so it's just a piece of text what we actually want is the file object, so an actual reference to that preset file on the user's system. So we can't do it using this function, but what we can do is create a user preset handler. So that's this one here, user preset handler, and from this we're able to get the current preset. So let me show you how we do that. So first of all we're going to create the user preset handler. Let's put a comment there. And we'll make this a constant. And we'll just call it UPH, user preset handler. That's going to be equal to engine.create user preset handler. We're also going to need a variable to store the current user preset. So we'll create that here, we'll call it current preset. And we're going to put the current user preset into here. So the way we're going to get it is when the user loads a preset from the preset browser we can get the user preset handler to trigger a callback and that callback will actually give us the preset file that was selected and then we can put that into our variable. So let's create that callback. So it's uph.set post callback. So this is called after the preset has been loaded and you can see it gives us the preset file here. So then we can call current preset equals preset file and now the file that's been loaded has been saved in our current preset variable. We can also update the text of our label as well. So this label is called LBL preset and there's a reference to it down here. So we can set that to the name of the preset. So we can just call LBL preset dot set text and preset file dot to string. So remember Preset file is a file object, so it has the to string function. And then in here, we just have to decide what string we want. So let's look at the help. So if we type to string, 
So these are our choices, full path, no extension, only extension or file name. I'm going to go for this one, no extension, so we just get the file name there. If we went for file name, we get the file name plus the extension. So it's going to be preset file dot no extension. Okay, and I'll hit F5 on that, and let's load a preset and see if that's worked. So preset two. Well, it's kind of worked, but I've got a typo here. I put preset filter instead of preset file. There we go. Let's try that again. So we'll open the preset browser, and now we get just the file name there. Now when I hit compile, it actually still shows the file name of the last preset, and you may want that, but I don't. I want it to clear it out. So down here where I've got the label declared, I'm just going to reset the text in on init. So that's cleared out now every time I hit F5. Ah, uh, what's going on there? Oh, dot set. There we go. So yeah, so now that'll clear out every time I hit F5. Okay, so now it's time to implement our button. So here's the callback for that button. I'm just going to add some extra lines here just to move that up the screen a bit. So when we click this button, which uh, by the way, this button is set to uh, saving preset disabled and it's set to is momentary. So when the button's pressed, we want to call a function that's going to save the preset. So first of all, we'll check that the value is one so that that it only triggers the callback when the button's pressed and not when it's released. So if the value is one, so if value, then we'll call save current preset. So this is a function that we're going to write. And we can write that function here. We'll add a comment functions. So the function will be called save current preset. So the first thing we need to do, we need to check if there actually is a preset loaded in our current preset variable, because if the user hasn't loaded a preset yet, then we don't have one to save. So that's the first thing to do. So we'll check, we'll say if is defined current preset, or uh, actually let's do not is defined. So if it isn't defined, or it's not a file, current preset dot is file. So we're using the not operator here. So we're saying if it's not defined or it's not a file, it's got some other value in it, then we just want to return at this point. And actually what we need to do here is we need to ask the user to create a file. So we'll call a function here. We'll call it create preset. And again, this is going to be a function that we declare and we'll declare it just up here. So the user clicks the button, it calls save current preset. If there is no preset, it calls create preset. And we'll populate this in a minute. We need to first of all finish off this. If there is a preset, then we want to ask them if they want to overwrite it. And if they do, then we want to save it. So we'll add a prompt here to ask the user if that's really what they want to do. So engine.show yes no window is the function we're going to use. And the title can just be confirm. The message is, um, do you want to overwrite the current preset? And I'll just give us some more room there. And then we get a callback function, which has the user's response, either yes or no, or okay or cancel, whatever the buttons say. So if they say yes, so if response is uh, true, so they've said yes, then we want to call engine.save user preset and the file we want to give is current preset. Okay, so that's it for that part. And we can actually test it at this stage. Uh, we can test this bit anyway. So we can load a preset, load preset two, and we can see the value of the knob is at one. Let's change that to 0 0.5. And now when I click save preset, it should come into here, it should skip this bit because we do have a preset file, we've loaded one, and it should prompt us to ask us if we want to overwrite. And when we click yes, it should overwrite the preset and it should now save preset two with a value of 0 0.5. So let's try that. We'll click save preset. There's our prompt. Do you want to overwrite the current preset? We'll click okay. 
So now preset two should have this value saved in it. Let's open the preset browser. We'll go to preset one. It's at zero. We'll go to preset two. It's at 0 0.5. So that worked. So now the last thing to do is to write this create preset function. Okay, so in our create preset function, we need to prompt the user to uh, select a preset file or create a file. So again, let's just give ourselves a bit more room here. So we're going to use file system dot browse, and this will open a file browser. And the folder we want it to start in is the user presets folder for this current project. And we can get that with file system dot get folder file system dot user preset. Actually, I think it's presets with an S on the end. If we get an, if it doesn't work, we'll know why. Okay, then the next parameter is do we want to open this dialog for saving? Do we want the user to just be selecting files or do we want them to be able to create files? We want them to be able to create files, so we'll set this to true. Then we need to give a file extension wildcard. And in our case, that's going to be star.preset. So the user can only select or create files that end in dot preset because that's the file extension that's used by Heise's preset files. And then the last parameter is a callback function, which if the user has selected or created a file, it will be passed in here. And we'll just call it f. Okay, so the user's clicked save, they've selected a file, and we've got it here in our f variable. So the first thing we're going to do is take f and assign it to our current preset variable over here. So we'll say current preset equals f. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to save the preset data. And we can do that using the same function we used here. engine.save user preset. And for the preset name, we can use F. We could also use current preset because at this point they're the same, but we'll use F. And then the last thing we need to do is update that labels text to show the name of the new preset. So we'll write LBL preset dot set text F dot to string F dot no extension. So the same as before, we'll hit F5. Just save everything. Okay, so now there is no preset currently loaded because I've hit F5 and everything's been refreshed. So if I click save preset now, it's going to come into our save current preset function and it's going to check if there is a current preset and there isn't. So it's going to come in here and it's going to call the create preset function, which is going to go to here. It will prompt us to select or create a file and it should open in the user presets folder. And then after we've selected a file, it's going to save it and update the label. So let's try this out. So it's open the file browser and it is in the user presets folder. So you can see desktop preset save button. That's the name of this project. In fact, I'll show you that. It's just on my desktop here. So it's this folder. And we're in the user presets folder. Now, when you compile this to a plugin or a standalone application, this uh, user presets folder will be in your app data folder. Okay, so we need to select a bank and a category, and then we can either select one of the existing presets or we can add a new one. Let's add a new one. We'll call it preset three dot preset. Okay, so we'll hit okay on that. We can see it's updated the label and there's our preset. And now if we change the knob to let's say 0 0.7, we can hit our save preset button again. It asks if we want to overwrite it. Click okay. If we load preset one, to zero, preset two to 0.5, and preset three is at 0.7. So it's all functioning and it's uh, working well. Now there are other things you can do to improve this, but that's the basic implementation. Now, one thing that uh, you might want to do, and I'll be making a video on uh, Patreon for my higher tier supporters to uh, show a way of doing this, but let's just uh, hit compile, click save preset. So when it prompts for saving the file, you can see we're at the root of the user presets folder. Now, if you were to save a preset at this point, let's call it preset four dot preset. We'll click OK and we'll open the preset browser. You can see it doesn't show up in the preset browser because it's not in a bank and a category and uh, therefore it, it won't appear in this uh, in this layout. If your preset browser has a different number of columns and so maybe you're not using the category or the bank, then um, then maybe it would show up. 
So we'll hit compile again. So with a three column preset browser, the preset always needs to be in a bank and then a category. And there are a few ways you can sort of enforce that. And I'll be making a video, which I'll be posting on Patreon, just for my higher tier supporters. And that will show one method of enforcing that and making sure the user has selected um, a bank and a category before saving the user preset. So if you're interested in that, check out my Patreon page, link in the video description. I hope you enjoyed this and found it useful. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.